Hi there. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone for joining, uh, giving us your time. Um, I'm going to jump right into it. And um, I'm not going to read off every speed and feed every feature. Um, you know, we'll, we'll make this material available afterwards. So if you want to see more information about something, um, I'm trying to show the bigger picture uh, and the concept versus every single detailed spec. Um, so I apologize if I go quickly there. Uh, there's a variety of videos that are embedded. I'll show a couple uh, here and there. Um, but uh, some of the videos, I might not show all of them unless we have time at the end, uh, but they're all on YouTube and we'll share the links for that later on as well. So let's see. Sorry about that. Okay, so our agenda is we're going to talk uh, about these multi-center, multi-directional cameras. I'm going to talk about some of the models that we have that Hanwha Techwin has, uh, and we'll talk about some of the use cases, where they fit in, uh, what the point of them is, uh, how to use them properly. And then the end of the session, we're going to go into, you know, how do I design a system with a multi-sensor? And that's going to, again, show you the use case and show you the cost savings, show you the benefits of uh, using these types of cameras. So. Uh, to start off, what is a multi-sensor camera? Uh, a multi-sensor camera is a camera that has multiple image sensors or imagers uh, and multiple lenses all in one housing. Now, we call them, we have two different categories. Where we'll say a multi-sensor or multi-directional. We'll get to that shortly. Um, depending on the design of the camera, uh, the camera might work as individual cameras or they might be stitched together as one big, large um, image and so we've got a variety of models i'm just going to speed up these animations here um, you can see we've got some um, uh, panoramic models on the top left we've got um, with two heads four heads five heads a variety of different uh, uh, options to fit to fit different needs and applications that we'll talk about so when would you use these types of cameras? So a panoramic camera where we're stitching multiple images together into one big, typically wide angle image. When I think got things like large uh, parking lots, parks, airports, city surveillance, uh, public areas where you have large areas to cover. Uh, think about the front of a shopping center. You wanna get that entire uh, parking area. You wanna put one camera on the front of the building and cover that. Um, then we have things like dual sensors or quad sensor cameras where uh, we've got intersections of, 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 of buildings, we've got um, schools where they have challenging uh, congregation areas, hotels with their long corridors and hallways, um, uh, retail, and other types of places where you need to cover lots of areas. We've all seen at the airport where we look up and we see um, where we see tons of uh, cameras in the ceiling and they're just pointed in all different directions. So the idea of a multi-directional is we can reduce that camera count, put one camera in the ceiling and have it looking at multiple areas. Um, and we'll talk again about cost savings in a little bit with that as well. So what we're used to seeing, like I just said, at the airport or things like that, are these big, ugly, ridiculous installations that, number one, they, they, they waste time, they waste money, they don't look good. Uh, you've got so much uh, product to maintain and manage. And so the idea with multi-sensors, multi-directional cameras, is to replace that with, again, a nice, compact-looking unit um, aesthetically pleasing and you don't have all those cable runs, you don't have all that uh, mounting hardware in the way. So uh, I'm going to show a, a brief video again. Hopefully this will play okay in the sound. Um, this is about a minute and a half uh, just to kind of show an overview of what a multi-sensor can do. Uh, not, necessarily, not necessarily looking at this specific model here, but just the general uh, idea of it.
you know, and what that's trying to show is that we have complete coverage, complete flexibility. Uh, in that case, it was mounted to the corner of a building. So they had kind of 270 degree coverage with one head looking down. Uh, so there's no blind spots, high frame rate, high resolution and full adjustability of, of where you want to look. Um, so um, some of the benefits, um, or I should say the other side of a conventional camera installation, if you need to cover that wide area, kind of like the front of a parking lot, like I mentioned earlier, you would need multiple cameras, uh, multiple uh, wire pulls, multiple ports on your switches, multiple recording licenses, one for each camera, and then lots of mounting hardware and accessories. So the idea is when we go uh, from a conventional installation, I'll just speed this up here, and then we move to a panoramic, a multi-sensor camera. Here you can see the picture. It's one camera, but has four lenses, four heads. It's stitched together in the camera in this example here. Um, we have one camera to install, one wire pull, uh, one port on the switch, one recording license, and one set of accessories for mounting. So uh, a lot of cost savings there. And again, then there's no blind spot. I get this ultra wide angle uh, field of view to see that parking lot uh, in this example. Oh, uh, I don't know what that animation was supposed to do, but that didn't work. Okay. Um, and different applications, different vertical industries here. Uh, again, anywhere where you have these large areas, large coverage, where I don't want blind spots, I want to be able to see everything that's happening all the time. Also, from an operator standpoint, not having to juggle back and forth between lots of cameras uh, and being able to see that overview very quickly and easily is great. Uh, if you have PTZ cameras, being able to see the overview and then use the PTZ for a detail to zoom in, again, very helpful. Uh, and we'll talk more about that shortly as well. Uh, one important note for our cameras, some people may have used panoramic cameras. Some of them have been around for many, many years. Um, these are, you know, a very advanced um, cameras where we're doing all the processing in, inside the camera head itself. So it works together as one cohesive camera. So all the camera features, motion detection, analytics, privacy zones, if you're using them, uh, all function like any other camera. So even though in this example here, you can see that white line, this is made up of four uh, images that are kind of stitched together. My motion, my privacy zones, my analytics can cross anywhere on the screen. We're not limited to individual zones and I think uh, there we go here's a, a picture showing it that we can do anything we want wherever we want so um, in this case here the, for the multi-sensor where they're stitched together it functions it looks at, in your VMS as one large camera to get you that ultra wide viewing angle um, so Hanwha uh, you know we've got two different models out today um, PNM 9020V. It's an outdoor vandal rated camera. It has four two megapixel um, uh, sensors. It stitches it together for 7.3 megapixel and has a variety of great features you can see on the left, OnVIF compliant, so it can work in pretty much any VMS out there. And again, the VMS will see it as one camera, one device. Uh, and then we have a newer model, the PNM 9030. It's higher as higher resolution. It has four five megapixel heads and it provides a stitched output of 15 megapixels it also has the ability to change the field of view you can either view 180 degrees or up to 220 degrees um, so some applications again side of a building or uh, uh hanging off of a off of a corner of a building or, or whatnot uh, to get that ultra wide angle view uh, it's got a variety of analytics built in and again other great features that you can see here um, we have a video on the YouTube channel. I'm just going to play a couple seconds of it here and there just so you can kind of see uh, what it can do. There we go. So you can see there's four imagers here. And when it's properly configured, you don't see any stitching issues or, or problems. And the camera, like I said, can be switched to a 220 degree mode to see an even, even wider field of view. Um, so that's that. that that's the uh, multi-sensor 
uh, versions. We then have some multi-directional cameras, and we've got a whole bunch of, of models of them. Um, but we start off with, we have a dual head camera. So it's two camera lenses, two camera heads in one housing. So again, it's one camera to install, one wire pull, one port on your switch, one VMS license in most VMSs. Um, but it allows you freedom to view two completely different areas as desired. So you can see here, I might be in an elevator lobby and I wanna look at two different elevator banks. I wanna look at an overview and a zoom in. Um, two different escalators. I might have it in a doorway of a hotel or in the lobby. And I wanna see the overview of the lobby, but also a zoom in um, of, the, of, of the front door. So we can individually adjust each head of where they're looking. Um, I'm not gonna play, well, I can play a couple seconds of the video, but again, it's, it's very similar to what you just saw, just um, you know, showing different applications. And the other piece they're trying to show is, again, eliminating blind spots in high frame rate um, and, and giving you the aesthetics of not needing tons of cameras in the ceiling to make it look nicer by having fewer cameras. Um, our, uh, this multi-sensor camera here, uh, multi-directional camera, has a different lens options. They use these modular lenses, um, and you can choose anywhere from a 2.4 millimeter all the way up to a six millimeter to get you different fields of view. And they're interchangeable, they're, you, they're, they're, they're field replaceable, um, and you can mix and match to get whatever combinations you want. You can put one head in hallway mode and, and, and one not in hallway mode. You can have wide angle, zoom in, there's lots of options there to really build a, a flexible application that, that meets your needs. Uh, again, like I just said, hallway mode, uh, a lot of people really like for two megapixel full HD cameras to get that, that um, portrait or landscape mode so we can easily adjust each one independently, again, to suit your needs. So here's showing you know, a, a office environment or a hotel where you have these long corridors to have to cover. Um, one thing to mention, oopsies, here um, is all of these cameras have a suite of intelligent video analytics. Um, these analytics can be run per channel. So for the multi-directional cameras, each head has independently. For the panoramic cameras, it's on or off for the whole camera. Uh, you can draw your zones of where to look for motion and whatnot. But the important thing is each head, each camera channel operates independently. That if you wanna turn a feature on for one head and not the other, you can certainly do that. Uh, all of our analytics are built in, they're license free. Um, and then they, 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 they work with most VMSs. If you're using the WiseNet Wave, they all obviously all come into there to allow you to create alerts and events when those events happen. So we have things like motion detection and tampering detection, uh, virtual line crossing or directional detection to detect uh, uh, an object crossing a uh, that virtual line in a specific direction. We have loitering detection, face detection, detecting a human face, um, as well as some others that you might have seen on some of those other slides as well. Um, so those are all independent and easily configurable. Um, so the two models we have for the dual head camera um, is we have the PNM 7000 VD. It's a two headed, two megapixel camera, like I mentioned with the interchangeable lenses, uh, all the other features you can see on here, it's PoE powered, outdoor vandal rated. Uh, I do see some cat questions are coming in. Uh, again, we'll, we'll, we're going to hold them for right now and we'll get to them at the end just to make sure we don't run out of time there. And then we also have the PNM 9000 VD, which is just the higher resolution. It's the five megapixel version. So two five megapixel heads, uh, again, different lens options there. Uh, besides that, all very similar uh, feature set there. And again, we already covered all the, the main advantages here, again, of uh, fewer cameras to install, fewer wires to run, et cetera. The big thing to remember here is for these cameras, if I have two heads, it's going to show up in my VMS as two channels. Um, most VMSs only charge one license, even though it's two channels, two heads. Um, and there's some huge cost savings that we'll get to shortly about that. Um, we also have some four-headed cameras. We'll talk about those in a second. Um, and you can easily mix and match and move the, those lenses around. You can have them looking out or straight down like I showed you in that video. 
Um, you can have narrow field of view or wide angle. There's lots of options there. Um, so they're fully adjustable um, uh, in how you configure them there. Um, so for the, actually, let me back up one a couple slides here. Uh, for the dual headed cameras, um, those cameras use uh, interchangeable lenses. So the cameras come with no lenses. You have to uh, put into your quote the camera and the heads you want, the lenses you want. You snap them in when you're installing the camera. They're pre-focused and ready to go, so you don't need to waste time with focusing. Uh, if you are picking up from 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 you know from your distributor and going back to your shop or in your truck, you can certainly put the lenses in and then put it uh, install it at the customer location. Uh, but for these, for the dual headed cameras, they do not inc include the lenses. Um, again, different lens options, different field of view. We'll skip that here. Uh, applications again, anywhere where you have large areas to cover that you don't wanna to have to put lots of cameras. So if you look at like a, a, a hospital, hospitals have lots of corridors, lots of hallways, lots of doorways, um, and they wanna be able to look down each hallway and view the waiting rooms and view all these different areas, congregation areas and doorways and controlled areas. Um, so multi-sensor camera allowing me to reduce my camera count and keep that aesthetic look. Uh, shopping malls, same thing. They need to make sure people aren't doing what they're not supposed to be doing and, and make sure people are happy and having fun and shopping and there's not shoplifting or whatever. Again, reducing camera count. Uh, and like I said, uh, we have full flexibility of all of the functions. So things like edge recording, wide dynamic range, motion detection, analytics, frame rate is all done per head and individual. Turning on a feature on one head is not going to affect the other heads. Uh, we don't run out of frame rate. We don't run out of performance processing power to do things like wide dynamic range. Uh, for all of these cameras, they are true uh, wide dynamic range. So multi shutter, multi exposure, uh, wide dynamic range. Uh, and I already showed most of this video, so I'm not going to bother replaying that one there. Uh, in terms of the different models that we have, um, we have our PNM 9080 VQ. Uh, this is kind of the the big guy that kind of does everything. It has two, uh, four two megapixel heads. Uh, they have motorized varifocal zoom lenses, so you can remotely adjust the zoom and remotely refocus the head. So you don't have to buy extra lenses. You just install the camera and you adjust the angle and rotation and all that by hand. And then you go up and you can adjust the, uh, the zoom and the focus remotely. Uh, again, just like you saw before, true wide dynamic range, analytics, um, outdoor vandal rated, ONVIF compliant, all of that. So this is the one that has two megapixel. And then we have the upgraded model that has the five megapixel camera heads. Besides that, they're, they're, they're fairly identical between uh, those two, but very flexible, very easy to work with for those models. We then have a, a lower cost model, the PNM 9000 VQ. This is also a four headed camera, but what's different with this one is this model uses the interchangeable lenses. Um, so instead of having the motorized varifocal lens, you put in the lens you want. So again, this one here does not include lenses. You have to order the lenses you want. The one unique feature for this one is you can interchange two meg and or five megapixel. So based on your application, if you have this in a lobby, you might want to put a five meg head uh, at the, the, the lens that's looking at the front door. So you get a very good shot a uh, high resolution, maybe you're gonna zoom that lens in like a seven millimeter to get a clear shot of the face of people walking in. But then for the lobby and the hallways coming off of there, you might want two megapixel in hallway mode. You might want wide angle. So you can pick and choose, mix and match how you want for that one there. Uh, and you'll see this with that model there because you can interchange the two and the five meg. You've got all these different combinations uh, of different ways to do it. So you can, again, like I said, mix and match. Uh, and then we have an upgraded version of that one where it also includes a PTZ camera. This is the PNM 9320 VQP. So it's got the four heads going around, interchangeable lenses, two meg or five meg. Um, 
And we have an option going all the way out to a 12 millimeter lens for that one. And then it also includes the fifth head, which is the two megapixel PTZ, uh, 32X PTZ at the bottom. So this allows me to, again, have no blind spots, a 360 degree view, uh, depending on the lenses you choose, but then be able to uh, zoom in on the fly, zoom in as you need uh, to zoom in, uh, have an operator controlling the PTZ camera. Uh, it also has a, let me see if there's a next slide here. Uh, no, it also has uh, a smart zoom feature, which depending on your VMS integration, uh, you can have the camera intelligently zoom in on the PTZ based on where you click on the other four heads. There's also some analytics integration where you can have uh, the, the PTZ automatically zoom in when things like motion or analytics are detected on the different four heads. Uh, so very cool uh, PTZ. You see these a lot in things like parks where you have lots of open space, uh, parking garages, um, um, what's it called? And things like stadiums where you have a lot of people, a lot of areas to go, but you also have a lot of operators who want to control those PTZs manually. Uh, and this just shows an example here of uh, in blue, I can have my forehead looking in different directions, but my PTZ gives me full complete 360 degree coverage. Oh, and here's the slide I was looking for, uh, showing the intelligent uh, PTZ handover, where I've got my four heads on the left, and someone walks out of that door, motion's detected, or any of the other analytics, it can automatically have the camera swing around, either to a preset location, or automatically go to what we call smart zoom mode, where it automatically goes to the uh, event that was triggered. Uh, and there's a really cool video. Again, I'm just going to fast forward through some of it so we don't have to watch all of it. But going here, motion detected on channel four, it automatically zooms in to give me a view of the event that happened. Um, and actually, this slide is a little bit out of date. Um, uh, these models have already been released. We, um, earlier this year, uh, added some additional, three additional models to our uh, multi-directional PTZ, uh, sorry, multi-directional lineup. Uh, these are what we call PTRZ models. That stands for pan, tilt, rotate, and zoom. What these cameras have is they have a uh, motorized mechanical function where you can remotely adjust where the cameras are aimed. So for these three models, you literally, you, there's a base plate the camera comes with, you put the plate in the ceiling, you attach, you run your cable through, you connect the network cable up, you, um, uh, the camera swings onto the plate, you put the dome cover on, you take the peel off the sticker, the, the plastic film, and you're done. You get off the ladder, you get down from the bucket truck, and you can then remotely through the network adjust the pan, the tilt, the zoom, the rotation. And as you adjust where the cameras are looking, they rotate around a track um, and you have full complete control. That allows, again, just ease of operation. If it's a difficult location, you're on a bucket truck 50 feet off the air, you can get down quickly. It also means you don't have to roll a truck if you have to make a change down the road. If the end user says, oh, you know, I know we said we wanted to look over here, but can you move it to the right a little bit more? You can do that no problem in seconds without having to roll a truck, without having to go on site. Um, 
if you work in retail, sometimes you have a retail store where uh, a sign, a promotional sign goes up or a store gets reconfigured and now a sign is blocking a camera or you want to be looking at a different end cap or who knows what, or now with the pandemic, right? Your, your, your checkout lanes, everything has changed, social distancing. I can go to these cameras and with a few clicks, adjust where the camera is aimed. Um, these are not PTZ cameras. They're not made to be moved every day all the time. They're made to be moved a few times a year. Um, we've got models, two megapixel models on the left, and the one on the right is a five megapixel for each head. The two models on the right, you'll see there's an R in the model name. name. The R refers to IR. So the black trim in the middle of the camera is hiding, covering up. Those two cameras have built-in IR illuminators to see up to 30 meters away. As the camera is adjusted, as you adjust the pan and tilt, the IR is ganged up with it. So it, it adjusts the field of view for the IR as well. So those are really great for uh, low light applications. Maybe you have a warehouse that lighting is normally turned off at night. Well, now the camera can still see perfectly uh, at night. Uh, so we have uh, those three new options. Those three are all uh, shipping and available now as well. Uh, these three do come with the lenses, as you see here, the three to six, 3.2 to 10, or 3.6 to 9.4. So those are ready to go uh, out of the box. Uh, and you'll see again some more of the, the, the features and specs, again, very similar to what we saw before. It's just I don't need to order lenses separately, and I don't need to manually adjust anything. It's all done. Um, again, one IP address. Uh, these cameras include the power injector. They use a high-powered POE injector. Uh, they have alarm and audio in and out as well, and they're outdoor rated. Uh, and this just shows you here kind of the menu um, where we can adjust where the cameras are looking. Uh, and so it shows you a map on the bottom left of where the cameras are located. And then you can adjust the pan and tilt uh, movement and the map will, will adjust. It shows you in real time on screen uh, the video from all four heads. If you need to move three of the heads to the left a little bit, you can actually select one or multiple heads hit left, hit right, up, down, zoom, focus, zoom in, zoom out, whatever, and you can move them individually or all together at once. So on to the second half about system design. So again, most of these I already listed, but there's a couple additional pieces to consider. Uh, number one is, so again, fewer network drops, fewer cables to, to pull and run. Uh, if you're mounting cameras on the side of a building and you're using a uh, conduit, less conduit have to purchase and, 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 and bend and hang. Again, fewer cameras to hang, fewer mounts and accessories to have to purchase and mount, um, fewer ports on your switch because it's all in one device, uh, fewer VMS licenses. So like I talked about before, uh, if you're using the WiseNet Wave VMS, our policy for multi-directional cameras and multi-sensors is if as long as it's one device, one IP address, all the heads are with one license. So if you have a five-headed camera, it's only one license. Uh, so that's a huge cost savings. Most VMSs follow that way, but some VMSs are a little different. So you have to check with each VMS manufacturer of their, their multi-sensor camera license policy. In addition, some VMSs charge a yearly maintenance fee. Well, if I have four cameras versus one four-headed camera, that's getting rid of three license fees per year you have to pay for. Obviously, if you're using the WiseNet Wave VMS, we don't use, we don't have any yearly maintenance fees, so that doesn't apply. Uh, fewer IP addresses and fewer devices on your network to manage. Some, some customers have outsourced IT support and you get charged for things like that. Uh, less rack space for your switches. Fewer devices, uh, for, again, like I said, for network management. Uh, less room in your server room or your IDF for cooling, less power, less UPS because fewer cameras. And then finally, Hanwha has some of our advantages. We have H.265 codec in addition to H.264, and we also have our Stream feature. And both of those um, help with reducing bandwidth and storage. So even though we're increasing camera counts and or count number of heads in one device, we can lower our throughput, lower our bandwidth with those two technologies. 
Uh, so system design. This is showing uh, using conventional cameras. I think we've got, where are my numbers here? There we go. Uh, this is showing, uh, and we put in some different model numbers. The models don't really matter. But it's showing we have 15 cameras. Depending on how the cameras are being mounted, we might need brackets or accessories to hang them from a ceiling or wall mount them. We need 15 recording licenses. We need at least a 16-port switch. And we might need conduit if we're using conduit uh, and cabling to run, to do my cable runs for that. If we compare that to using multi-sensor cameras, this is showing here, I might have a panoramic camera to get a big overview of the whole general area. And then I have some dual headed cameras and four headed cameras. And so this is showing this example here, I am using five cameras to provide complete coverage. Uh, I only need an eight port PoE switch. I only need conduit and cable for five cameras, even though I have 16 imagers total and fewer mounting brackets and accessories for that. If we look at a cost comparison, again, obviously these numbers may vary depending on distances based on a lot of things, but we use the same numbers for the calculation for both uh, standard system and multi-sensor system. So on the left, we're showing again, 15 cameras, mounting accessories, labor and time to install the cameras, conduit, cabling, recording licenses. Uh, we're putting in a, a, a cost for the ports on the switch, uh, power, AC, all of that. And on the right, we're looking at a five camera system with multi-sensor. And when you look, you'll see that we're showing not including cameras, but we're talking about all these other costs, the labor and installation. This is showing uh, about an $8,000 cost savings um, because we're installing so many fewer cameras. So that's one example. Uh, a second example here, um, this is showing a 12 camera system versus using a multi-sensor camera system or actually a combination of um, there is one single camera, four two-headed cameras, and a couple fisheye cameras. What makes this system unique here, and I apologize, this graphic is not the best, um, but there's a lot of stairwells. There's three stairwells, and we want to capture both sides of the stairwell, people going up and down. So we're, we're replacing two single cameras with uh, a dual-headed camera. There's also some hallways, and we want to be able to capture both sides of the hallway, not having a... Um, uh, um, a blind spot. And so again, you can see those cost savings there. And for the third system here, this is showing a large system. This is showing uh, a hundred camera system versus a system using a combination of single sensor and multi-sensor cameras, a uh, hundred cameras versus a total of 71 cameras. Um, and you'll see again, huge cost savings um, from all those pieces that we talked about. Um, and like I said, I've been talking about our WAVE VMS. So uh, if, if you guys want more information, feel free to uh, ask questions or check out our website. Our WAVE VMS is really uh, intelligent. It's quick, it's easy, it's cost effective, uh, and it works really well with multi-sensor cameras for that, though, all these reasons we've been talking about. I'm not gonna go into any, you know, tons of detail on that, but um, just so everyone is aware of that. Um, And I think that, whoops, well, that, okay. So my second monitor just dropped off. Sorry about that. Um, uh, I was just going to mention that, right, so we've got our Wave VMS. We also have a variety of Wave servers where the servers come with the Wave VMS preloaded servers or workstations. Uh, so you can check out our website for lots of more information uh, about that. Um, we also have on our YouTube channel, we have a variety of videos showing how to use our modular lens cameras. Actually, I'll show this since we have a, a minute or two here. Um, I'll show you for the cameras that I said do not include the lenses so everyone can see how they work. And we have to move the switch to off to turn power off to the camera so we don't damage the lens module. You'll see the lights go off. Then we take the lens module, we line up the arrow that points to the connector, and then just give it a little wiggle so that it falls into place, and then push it in tight. 
here again, the next one, give it a little wiggle, and then push it in, and it'll snap right into place. You can then aim and adjust where the lenses are pointing. Then slide the switch back to on, and you should see two green lights to indicate that the lens modules are connected properly, and then you can close the dome cover aligning the guides. All right, so hopefully that shows just to give a more an example of what that looks like and how that works. Uh, we also have detailed videos uh, showing um, the different cameras. So the, the five-headed camera with the uh, PTZ, there's you know, an eight-minute video showing you how to configure it, how it, how it gets installed, uh, how you put the lenses in, so all of that. So we have a lot of great videos on our YouTube channel. Uh, obviously, we don't have time to show all of that, um, but just wanted to mention that we have that there. Um, and that's it for my uh, for the presentation here. Uh, I think what we'll do is um, my colleague is going to share some uh, some questions that came in, and we'll we'll field the floor here of uh, any questions that people have from there. Prior to doing that, can we uh, get Josh on for a couple minutes while? Oh, right. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, no problem. Hey, everybody. Happy Thursday. Uh, I'm the project manager registration for ADI. Just do a quick plug while they get everything set up. Um, my team basically registers large projects with our various vendors, including Hanwha. Uh, if you have something coming up where you know you're working on a large job for a school, uh, military installation, bank, you know, any business, anything larger than five to $10,000 is the general range we look at. Get in contact with your local ADI branch and let them know uh, the bill of materials you're looking at, what you're wanting to do. They can help you put something together. We can use our systems team to help you put something together and then they'll get it to us and we can uh, run it up the flagpole with the various vendors, see if we can get discounts. And if we do, we pass hundred percent of that along to our customers. So um, the process usually takes a few days, uh, but it can save you quite a bit of money in the long run. If you're doing a large project uh, and you have enough time to, to kind of run that up the flagpole. If anybody has any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me um, and just let me know. How do they get a hold of you, Josh? So my email is joshua.gilland at adiglobal.com um, or, or I was really <laughs> referring to if they have any questions uh, in, this, in this presentation. But uh, the branch is the best way to reach out to the team. Everything's handled through the, the branch codes. So if you know your local sales rep, um, just let them know when you're looking at something and we can handle it on our end. Thank you. That clarifies a lot. Okay. So we're going to be looking for more questions. I'm going to read Aaron the questions and um, he's going to answer them. And we'll um, go till we're done. Uh, David McClure wants to know, Aaron, if you have to order lenses separately from the cameras or does a lens come with it? And then just if you need something specific. Right, yes, yeah. so uh, thanks David. That, that's, um, you know, it depends on the camera model. So any of the cameras that have those interchangeable lenses where you can pop them out, like you just saw in that last video, um, those need to be ordered separately. Um, so just for cost savings, we didn't want to ship the camera with a lens that it's the wrong one, you don't need it. We don't want to have to stock uh, you know, hundreds of models with different configurations. So uh, we have the two-headed cameras, we have some of the four-headed cameras and the five-headed camera where you order the lenses separately. So that's where, um, you know, you can work with us, you can work with the guys at ADI, um, uh, build your quote, build your project, build your bill of materials uh, correctly. It also means that down the road you have scope creep that you realize, oh, I, I thought we needed this, but now we need that. You don't have to return a camera. You don't have to uninstall a camera. You can literally just replace the lens module. They're very inexpensive and be able to just pop it in and you're, you're, you're ready to go. Um, so again, so it depends on the model camera. Some cameras include lenses, some, any of the ones with the interchangeable lenses, those are uh, sold separately. Thank you for asking that, answering that. Alex Toscano wants to know, is the smart functions of the PTZ a function of the camera or is it done by VMS software? 
So, uh, great question. So, most of it is done right on the camera. Um, and I'll explain the why in a second. Um, if you want, you saw the video where uh, motion was detected or a analytic, or someone cross a line or whatever, and then the camera goes to a preset where the camera zooms in to that uh, event. That's all done on the camera. It's all programmed inside the camera. It's very easy to do. The one part that's VMS side is some VMSs allow you to have uh, the five heads on the screen and you can draw a box or click on the screen of the four fixed heads and that will direct, that will drive the PTZ to go to that zone or to go to that spot. That would be a function of the integration with a VMS. Um, but the other part, the event part is all done on the camera side. Thank you. Um, Brent Grant is following up with that. Is that a lifetime or a yearly cost? Yes, so for the Wave VMS specifically, um, we do, it's a one-time lifetime cost for that many licenses on that server. You can change the cameras, you can uh, uh, replace an old camera with a new camera, you can still reuse that, that license. Uh, so the way VMS, it's one-time costs for licensing. Okay, Alex Toscano follows up with another question. Do you have to add all the lenses to the camera for it to work? For example, you put a camera on the corner of the building, uh, you would only need to cover uh, a 270 degree area with a corner mount. Yeah, so uh, I've definitely seen that a lot. Um, there's two ways to do it. Um, way number one is you could still put in, again, if it's, if it's the camera with the interchangeable lenses, you could put all four lenses in and have one lens looking straight down. A lot of times people wanna see what's right below the camera so they don't have, again, a blind spot there. Um, also, if the camera has the built-in lenses, then you already have them. If you're using the camera, that does not come with the lenses and you said, oh, why should I spend the extra money to put in a lens I don't need? Again, some of the lenses are really low cost, but uh, you absolutely could do it where you only put in three of the four lenses. As long as you'd want to look physically on the camera and find the, 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 the lens numbers, the channel one, two, three, four, it's always recommended to make sure you put lens one in uh, I had someone recently where they put lenses two, three, and four in, and they, there was a, an issue. They then moved the lenses so they're in one, two, three, four, and it works just fine. You know, your VMS might give an error, and you just need to delete that channel or whatever. Um, uh, but especially when the cost is an issue uh, for the four-headed cameras or the five-headed, uh, you, you could leave out a head uh, as needed. <laughs> 